Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AdamyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at dynamic equilibrium. Now dynamic equilibrium is a, a very important part of chemistry mainly because it's, it exists in just about nearly every chemical reaction that you have and in this video we're basically just going to show you the introductory parts of uh, dynamic equilibrium and we'll go through a generic example and point out some of the key points that you uh, need to know when a uh, reaction establishes equilibrium. So just to start with, to try and explain and set the scene what equilibrium means, um, I've got a container of water, so it's like a glass container of water. Now if I was to leave this for a good period of time then um, what will happen is this water will evaporate. So you'll have some of the particles at the surface of this water that have enough kinetic energy to leave the surface and turn into water vapour. Um, so this reaction will happen providing that the temperature um, uh, in this case is, is warm enough for this reaction to happen. Obviously the warmer the temperature, the faster um, the rate of evaporation is going to occur. So um, that's probably going to happen there. Now, if I put a lid on the top of this, like so, so if we put a lid on there, then effectively the water is still going to evaporate um, and you'll get um, more of the um, liquid water turning into uh, water vapour. Um, and as the water vapour levels in this space here um, starts to rise, then some of that water vapour will actually condense back into a liquid. Um, and actually we effectively haven't lost any original volume of water. Um, and that is what we call a dynamic equilibrium. Now, uh, the word dynamic actually means the rate at which the, um, the water is actually evaporating is the same as the rate at which the vapour is condensing back into a water. But we call this a closed system, because you can see we've got a lid on the top of it and no reactants uh, or products can actually escape from this container here. So it's all contained in one place. So that is crucial actually to um, when we're describing dynamic equilibrium and what we need is a closed system. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you need a, a lid on top of your reaction. What it means is that your um, reactants or products cannot escape when this reaction occurs. Um, if there's an opportunity or if there's a potential for the reactants and products to escape, uh, for example through evaporation, then um, you effectively don't have a closed system and equilibrium um, will not be established. So that is a really key point that you need to know, that it must be a closed system. Um, also, it must be dynamic. Now, the word dynamic, like I said before, means that the rate of the um, forward reaction uh, equals the rate of the backward reaction. And it is really important that we mention the word rate in this um, example here as well. And the third one um, is actually when something is established in equilibrium, so for example like this water here, there is actually an equilibrium reaction happening right now. But when something is actually in equilibrium, we shouldn't see a change in physical state. So that could mean colour, it could mean uh, density, um, uh, it could mean in terms of um, how it looks. So anything like that, the physical properties should remain the same and it appears as though nothing's happening but actually and there is, there's a reaction that's going on um, and we say that there's no change in physical properties. And the last one is actually equilibrium can be established um, from either direction, so either the forward or the backwards direction. So again, in this particular example here, um, we use the equilibrium of water and liquid going into vapour, um, but equilibrium could be established from vapour going back into a liquid as well. So, um, but the key point here is that equilibrium um, is where the rate of the forward reaction uh, equals the rate of the backward reaction and it appears as though nothing's happening uh, because the reaction is actually in equilibrium. So we're going to start with the generic example up here. Um, you can see we've got A plus B will give C plus D. So we're going to uh, see what happens in this reaction. So at the start of the reaction, imagine we had loads of A and B because these are our reactants and we don't have any C and D. Now you can imagine that when this reaction proceeds, we will have a very quick reaction to start off with because we have an abundance of A and B. So at the start, um, equilibrium is actually, um, well, A and B reacts a lot, so you get a fast reaction. So we'll put that on there. Fast reaction. Uh, and that's because you have lots, lots of A and B. Okay. Uh, equilibrium, um, in this case, um, will actually, well, the reaction will actually push towards the, the the forward direction, so you'll have a very strong 
uh, forward direction uh, reaction here. There isn't any C and D, so you don't get any of the reverse reaction going backwards. Okay, in the middle, so effectively as the reaction proceeds, what we start to get is the um, amount of A and B will effectively start to decrease, but the amount of C and D will effectively increase. And what you'll actually start and get at this point is actually some of the C and D will actually react and turn back into A and B. But at this stage, um, we've still got a large amount of A and B, so the equilibrium is still um, trying to push well over to the right. So we're producing more products than we are reforming reactants. Um, and it isn't until, and this may take maybe a minute, two minutes, it could take days, it could take weeks, it depends on the reaction, uh, eventually we will establish what we call equilibrium. And at this point, um, it's important to point out that it's actually the rate of A and B being used up. Um, so I'll put that there. The rate at which A and B is used up is the same, um, is the same as C and D being used up. And that is really, really important because it's nothing to do with the, um, the amount of A and B or C and D. We're not talking about the quantities, we're talking about how fast this um, the forward and reverse reaction is occurring. And in an equilibrium system, the rate is the same, but not necessarily the amount of A and B and C and D may not be the same. In fact, you may have a lot more C and D than you do A and B, but our reaction can still be in equilibrium because the rate at which um, these reactions are occurring are the same. So a good analogy, I suppose, is a little bit like an escalator. So if you imagine you're a person on an escalator and you're walking up the down escalator or vice versa. So what's happening is you are um, moving at a particular speed up the escalator. Now, if you move at the same speed as the escalator moves down, you're effectively in equilibrium with this reaction. Now, you could be standing in the middle of the escalator, uh, and that's effectively like a reaction with equal amounts of A and B and C and D. So if you're standing in the middle, now, if you're moving at the same rate, you effectively, it looks as though nothing is happening. It looks as though you're not moving. And this kind of fits in with this one here. Um, you are moving, of course. It's just that the backwards... Uh, the rate at which the escalator is moving backwards is the same as what you're moving forwards. Now, just like in equilibrium, um, this person here is in equilibrium. Now, we can change the conditions. We can make this person move faster at the escalator, and eventually they'll reach the top. Um, or we can speed up the escalator, uh, and obviously that person eventually will drop down back to the bottom again. Um, but that's to do with Le Chatelier's principle when we change conditions. So if that's the video that you're looking for, uh, or if you'd like to look at the um, what happens when we change conditions to an equilibrium reaction, just click on the link below and you can have a look at that video. But this person could be stood in the middle, but they could still be stood at the top here. So they could be nearer the top than they are at the bottom. So that's a little bit like the reaction producing more products than uh, reactants. But it can still be in equilibrium because this person could be near the top of the escalator, but still moving at the same rate as the escalator is moving down. Now, effectively, what that means is um, that you appear that um, nothing's happening. Okay, final point, important things. At equilibrium, the rate, and it's important as the rate, of the forward and the backward reaction are equal, um, but you don't have to have the same quantities. So that's really, really important, and it's a really common error for students to make in exams as well, is that um, is they talk about the amount of A and B equals the amount of C and D at equilibrium, and that's not the case, it's the rate. So I've said that about 10 times in this video, um, so it, it just shows you how important that is, and as long as you get that and you understand that, then you should be fine. But I hope the escalator analogy works, just keep thinking of that in your exam, and you should be okay. That's it. Bye.